We are talking about the prophetic woman of God. As you're joining in, of course, you could share this broadcast and you could uh, invite your followers. Deborah was a judge and the Holy Spirit entrusted her to judge over the people of God. But what you want to look at, Deborah, what God placed in her was the ability to make the proper judgments, which are decisions that he likes. So she understood how to make decisions that please the Holy Spirit, that didn't make the Lord grieved. The decisions that she made brought order, organization, peace to the mind of God. So the prophetic on Deborah exposed why God created the woman because he wanted his pleasure equation to be completed. When Deborah is making these judgments, everything that she's saying and doing is creating God's will in situations where there's chaos, where Satan seeks to bring violence, damage, destruction, but she is there bringing peace, clarity, and wisdom. So if you look at the life of Deborah, you can see the prophetic woman of God, what that prophetic woman of God is all about. That prophetic woman is carrying the mind of God towards every situation. And she is a possessor of his will. She does not lean to her own understanding or her emotions in order to make decisions. What Satan has done for ages is given woman a false prophetic anointing called intuition. Intuition will blindside you in so many ways because intuition is flawed. Intuition is where you observe something and according to your own natural observation, you pick up your own summaries. Now these summaries are not coming from the Lord, it's just coming from your observation. In the book of James, you see the flaw of intuition. Because James, the apostle, is saying that if somebody comes wearing rings and they look nice, don't treat them better than somebody that comes in with holes in their garment and they look poor. Apostle James was talking about the intuition of people, that when they observe someone, they make summaries on how they're going to treat them based upon how the person looks. The same way if you study the life of um, Samuel. Remember when he went go anoint a king? He looked at Jesse's sons, Eliab, and he looked at Jesse's sons and he was making a decision based upon how they looked and decided they had the stature of what kingliness looks like. They had broad shoulders. They looked masculine. They looked tough. And then the Lord rebuked him, said, I don't look at the heart, uh, uh, the outward appearance. I look at the heart. So Samuel had to be delivered from intuition. Intuition is a flawed state that oftentimes a woman will have operating inside of her. The intuition is not giving you clarity about people. You're just looking at them according to how they make you feel. You just observe them based upon they never slapped me. They never shot me. I never saw them talking to anybody about me. This is all intuition. As a woman, you look at the danger of intuition because the first woman on earth didn't believe that the serpent was horrible because why would you talk to someone and keep somebody in your face that don't mean you well. And from that point going forward, women have kept people in front of them that don't mean them well, whether it's a boyfriend, whether it's a husband, whether it's a cousin, whether it's a sister, whether it's a neighbor, 
women have kept people in front of them that don't even have the correct heart towards them. The person is not sent on an assignment from heaven, but an assignment from hell. But women from Genesis all the way till now have been okay with someone being in their life that has evil spirits. They have been okay with somebody being in their life that does not have the desire of God towards them. And then there's another realm of intuition that we see in the life of uh, Eve is that Eve's intuition is guiding her to be persuaded by the person that doesn't even mean her well. This serpent is telling her things and is becoming more persuasive, is becoming more believable, is becoming more harmless. And now the serpent actually looks like an advocate to her, that the serpent is looking out for her when the serpent is really looking to get her out. So intuition is a part of you as a female that you have to destroy that for discernment. Intuition is something that Satan sculptured so that discernment God's way would not be made manifest in you. So you have to get rid of the fake Jordans where Jordan is eating a cheeseburger and he's dunking over Yao Ming and get the real Jordans where he's really logoized as how it's supposed to be. You got to get rid of the bootleg video where the pregnant person walking at the bottom of the screen with Popeye's chicken buckets in their hands and get the real video where there's no interruptions, no infomercials or ads at the bottom of the screen. You got to let go of the bootleg observation that Satan gave to you as a woman. So while you think that you see, you're actually more blind than you ever been. So the prophetic woman, what is she all about? This is a female that has let God slow her down to take in the proper data about situations, about herself, about her surroundings, about her future. The prophetic woman is not ludicrous mentally, having vain imaginations, thinking about things that will never happen. She is not delusional. She has the spirit of revelation. So she's not saying Steve Harvey is going to come to my house by this time tomorrow to give me $5 million. She's not delusional. Most women that believe that they're prophetic are actually delusional. They make things up in their head like a child that's playing with their toys. And they let their brain go into ludicrousy. Being prophetic is not just aimlessly guessing the future. Being prophetic means that you have let God slow you down to understand what is for you and what's not for you. Who is for you and who is not for you. When you're a prophetic woman, you'll stop trying to save the world because the world is not going to be saved. When you're a prophetic woman, you'll invest yourself into the one that you're assigned to. The one, the one, not the ton. Prophetic women are not found in 15 cities trying to save 15 cities. A prophetic woman is not in 20 states trying to save 20 states. A prophetic woman is not in Guatemala today and in Philippines tomorrow and in Africa tomorrow and in Europe tomorrow and in London tomorrow and in Chicago tomorrow. The prophetic woman is assigned to a region to finish a, ta to finish a task. And when she finishes the task, when God sees fit, not when she sees fit, God promotes her to the next task. 
But that's not up to her. And she, she is such a prophetic woman that she's not going to rush God to promote her. Because she knows when you see fit for me to be promoted, that's the right time. If I get promoted before that, I wouldn't even be successful in the promotion. The prophetic woman is at peace with the watch of God. His time frames become her mind frame. You take a note, write that down. The prophetic woman God's time frames becomes her mind frames. The prophetic woman. And she is in agreement with the time in which the Lord has desired to accomplish events, transitions, and rearrangements. She's at peace with that. Could we say that Esther was a patient woman? How do you wait 12 months experimenting with oils and perfumes, taking baths, learning the hygiene of a queen, the hygiene of a queen? How do you smell? And she learned to smell good, not only physically, but mentally. Her feeling good that the smelling good that she had was not just sensual from the nostril. It was mental from the mind. Her thoughts smelled good to God. Her evaluation of seasons smelled good to God. Her placement where she was placed smelled good to God because her reaction, how do you react to where the Lord wants you to live? How do you react where the Lord wants you to work? How do you react to where God wants you to learn? There's, there's 7,000 prophets, but how do you react, Elisha, to who I called and sent to anoint you? You have 7,000 that you could pick from, but how do you react to the one I picked to anoint you? Mary Magdalene, how do you react to the one that I sent to deliver you from strong devils that you didn't get delivered from while you was going to church, while you heard about synagogues all throughout Jerusalem. You heard about Pharisees and Sadducees. You heard about the tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles. You heard about all these things going on. But I sent someone that healed you of seven devils. What's your reaction to your deliverer? Your deliverer, you got delivered. See, as a woman, your whole life is determined by your reactions to everything. How do you react to Boaz? Do you look at Boaz and says, let him find another woman to sit at his feet? Or do you become that woman? Do you react to Boaz as, I'm gonna wait till the father sends somebody else to me? Or do you perceive Boaz and recognize this is where I finally receive the transformation, the transition, and the treasure? The transformation, the transition, and the treasure. The transition, the transformation, and the treasure. A prophetic woman. When a woman is prophetic, you don't become a wrestler with the Holy Spirit. You become an investor in the Holy Spirit. 
A prophetic woman sows her body, her time, her mind, her words, her life, her studying, her excellence to the Holy Spirit. A prophetic woman will not permit anybody that God didn't see her with to remain around her. She will not permit that when she's a prophetic woman. When you're not a prophetic woman, it's okay for you to be surrounded by snakes. You're at peace with poison. The, the non-prophetic woman is at peace with poison. She adapts to what wraps around her neck and suffocates her. That's the non-prophetic woman. She adapts to what wraps around her neck and strangles her. When her life supply is gone, she's still calm. But when you're a prophetic woman, there is an anger that you have for inaccuracy. The prophetic woman hates error. The prophetic woman has enmity with the enemy. The prophetic woman is not smiling at the cobra. The prophetic woman is not laughing with the dragon. The prophetic woman does not permit her flaws to remain. A prophetic woman is operating in the spirit of repentance. So she's constantly making a decision to go against what she formerly did, what she formerly knew, who she formerly was associated with. The prophetic woman has a spirit of repentance. Her decision is not to remain in what is illegal for her progress. The prophetic woman will make changes daily to herself and her environment. The prophetic woman will train her soul to love consistency rather than comfort. Did you catch that? The prophetic woman will train herself to love consistency rather than comfort. Saints, do you know that a comfortable woman will never have the weight that she desires? Because she has chosen comfort over consistency. So whenever she's doing something, if she say, I want to gain 20 pounds or I want to lose 20 pounds, She'll never get there because she's choosing comfort over consistency. The same way with finances. A woman will never be making money because you rather sleep more than reap. A Proverbs 31 woman is a working woman. She solves problems. She is a entrepreneur. She is an inventor. She finds the location where money is supposed to enter her bosom. And she makes it the priority to reap rather than sleep. The prophetic woman is the pro productive woman. Her fruit is always increasing. And she has chosen consistency over complacency, consistency over comfort. She's not choosing to be comfortable in a corrupt financial level, a corrupt health level where she's sick, where she's broke, where she's struggling. She's not comfortable there. The prophetic woman becomes angry at the stagnation of Satan on her soul. The prophetic woman gets angry at the fact that Satan believes that she will never recognize that she has power over her flesh. 
She has power over her emotional state. She has power over her need for attention, her need for touch, her need for recognition, her need for praise. The Bible say about the proper study woman that her husband shall praise her. Her children going to praise her. The whole revelation about this is that women, they were created to receive praise, but most women never even qualify for the praise that they were created to receive. Because for you to receive the praise, the Bible says the woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. So many women don't fear the Lord. So they begin to malfunction because you was created to be praised, but there's not a reason for you to be praised because the qualification for that praise to even legally enter into your ears is if you are someone that fears the Lord, the prophetic woman. 